Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. I'm going to ask you on this Monday, November 4th. Been up for a while already, went for a little bit of a run, thinking about some things. Uh, we're a couple hours here before the London Open. Let's take a look at what is going to happen today. We had some positive news over the weekend on trade. We had a quite a bullish close for risk uh, for the S&Ps. And we have now what I would say close to unanimity on uh, dollar weakness ahead, which is always a risk. Um, if you look around on Twitter, if you look around through the normal media channels, FT, Wall Street Journal, Aussie Financial Review, even some of the regular papers, New York Times, LA, uh, Washington Post, uh, you'll see that the boat is turning and people are finally getting on board with the fact that the dollar is going to weaken um, and that euro is going to be fine. For whatever reason, um, they're all here. So we expect this to continue um, as people start to put this position on. I think it's pretty safe to buy euro dips. I'd be careful um, break trading it through 80 today. Uh, let's start with that. One of the reasons I'm, I'm worried about this is the 200-day moving average is 111.98. So it's kind of like a trap breaks scenario here. Um, I think the longer term guys are going to be, and the mathematically based guys and the mean reversion guys are going to be selling into this 200-day. Uh, as they are prone to do so there's going to be a lot of two-way traffic between 80 and 98 so above 112 especially on news uh, this becomes more satisfying for dollar bears so just be careful here uh, there will be some stops above 111.80 surely we will trade there at some point today uh, but I think you're better off buying low ones uh, in euro than trying to buy through the highs Dollar Swiss, uh, if you're a dollar bear, this looks like uh, your best horse, especially if you're suspect on the risk side of things, uh, which we are suspect. Um, we're in this uh, sort of vortex of risk on with no real foundations, I have to say. I think the trade deal is never going to get done properly. The marriage between uh, the U.S. and China uh, inevitably has to end in divorce so uh, I'm just f fairly skeptical and whether Brexit is solved or not this whole Brexit pretzel uh, it is going to stay twisted and stay fucked up for uh, anywhere between two and sort of eight years uh, unless there's a referendum that reverses it completely so the situation in the UK is hardly resolved the trade deal is uh, ridiculously unsolvable um, and earnings and just the debt situation in America makes me just super skeptical right but we talked about this before you've seen it on some of the interviews I've done uh, we think debt is going to lead this um, why because corporations have too much debt and refinancing that debt at higher rates is going to bankrupt a whole lot of them um, or put them into uh, very strong financial distress. So we're waiting for the debt markets to turn. We're core short uh, fixed income now, but we will add uh, as it goes lower. Anyway, long story short, Dollar Swiss looks like the best vehicle to express dollar shorts not only on the charts here uh, 9840 looks looks pretty interesting here um, but also if risk does turn obviously people will move their money into Swiss francs let's take a look at dollar yen big down day on Thursday 108.55 was the breakdown this is now going to be resistance um, we traded uh, up to 32 on Friday. We've done nothing today. Seven point range, 1825. Uh, 
we saw some bids in the 80s, 107.85 and 107.82 on Friday, but I do like being short dollar yen also in the same for the same reasons I like being short dollar Swiss. Uh, if risk does turn, uh, yen will benefit, and this looks like the smoother and safer way to be short. Plus, uh, the weekly bar bearish engulfed basically from the high. This is super important. So there will be guys, there will be action through 90. We'll have to see if those bids are around in the 80s, but this looks like more of a break trade or momentum trade to us, similar to the dollar Swiss chart uh, through 107.90 and through 98.40. Uh, we'll see some action here and we'll be expecting some action from our friends in the momentum community, the CTA community, uh, and sort of the tactical hedge fund world. Let's take a look at cross yen. It's a little bit more convoluted. Um, this is the weekly chart. It did not bearish engulf. Here's the daily, which did bearish engulf. We haven't confirmed yet, so basically just keep it in your pants, people. Uh, wait till we get down through 120.27. This could easily just cruise higher on the euro side and what do we have here basically we have basically 12150 which is massively important um, there'll be money to made up be made up here but I also would argue there'll be money to be made down here one we'll call it 12030 but it's really 12027 so in the middle of all this just be patient you might get chopped up um, you know it's really difficult to see which side of this trade is going to win. If Euro shoots higher and Dollar Yen does nothing, Euro Yen goes higher. If Dollar Yen collapses and Euro gets caught with loads of Gamma, Euro Yen goes lower. Uh, that's kind of our base case. Uh, gamma on the top side and Euro Dollar is going to make this a slow, um, slow train higher. Whereas the elevator shaft in Dollar Yen could open at any single day at any single time. Um, with trade news or just bad news or risk off. So, but anyway, cross yen, we thought it was going to confirm on Friday. It did not. Uh, so now we are in patience mode. You could say the same thing about sterling yen. This is sort of a little bit of a wedge here. You could draw. It probably looks better on the 240s, but. Basically, the point is cross yen is consolidating, um, and it's a little bit trickier. So uh, dollar yen shorts now look a little bit more straightforward um, for now. We're waiting for confirmation on cross yen. Let's look at Aussie because we have the RBA tomorrow. We talked about the huge volume at 69, the figure, last week. And on Friday, we were pretty sure that the downside um, was going to come into play. And we almost made a new low, but we didn't. So now we're just waiting for confirmation, right? So we had huge buyers and huge sellers meeting at 69 to figure. As you saw from our, uh, week, in, our week ahead video, uh, there's lots of trend lines that are, that are breaking here or, or close to breaking. Here's the daily. There's many of them you can draw point is this, this we're at a huge sort of import hugely important point in Aussie uh, and we're going to use this bar here which was Thursday's bar um, as our confirmation so prices below 68.83 we become bearish prices above 69.30 we become bullish uh, based on stocks and based on the weaker dollar uh, sort of mood that the market's in you would argue that the top side's at risk RBA is coming out tomorrow uh, good trade deal news this could go higher but again it's going higher on a house of cards so if there's money to be made if it breaks on the top side just be disciplined with your stops um, which you could say for all trades so I won't even say that for this but just be normally disciplined with your stops here if you're going to get long through 69.30, you should know very quickly that this is a correct trade. It shouldn't dilly-dally. It shouldn't 
you know, jerk you around at all. Should, shouldn't get back below 69 the figure um, if it's correct. Anyway, Euro Yen uh, is pulling in the other direction. I mean, Aussie Yen, excuse me, is pulling in the other direction. We had this bearish engulfing on Thursday. No confirmation on Friday. Same exact chart as Aussie Yen. We're mildly bearish Euro Aussie Yen because of the Yen side and because we're skeptical of risk, but the chart basically says B square. So either have something tiny or B square. Dollar CAD was frustrating for a lot of people. Um, BOC was dovish. We thought FOMC was kind of neutral. They were forced to cut because of the debt markets. Um, that's for another video, I guess. We could talk about that in another video. But we're right back in the middle of nowhere in dollar CAD. Uh, we printed 27 tonight. There should be some support down here. In general, I guess you can buy dollar CAD, but we're just going to leave it alone. We had our chance to confirm on Friday. It didn't happen. So now just leave uh, dollar cat alone. Let's take a look at stocks. We talked about getting short at 3060, which we did. Uh, we have now been stopped. So now we are square stocks, just waiting for the bad news to come. We are not going to fight this. Uh, we're going to put ES aside until we see either some terrible news come out uh, that we think is lasting terrible news. Or we see prices now below 30, 20, and more importantly, below 3,000. This could easily go up to 31, 20, uh, another 50 handles, 2%, big deal. Um, no point in being short here. It doesn't make any sense at all. Fixed income, on the other hand, uh, we like being short. We talked about selling high ones uh, near 172. We're core short. Um, probably add here through one one seventy fifty seven. If we get fiscal news, if we get good news, or if the market starts just doubting the debt markets. And this will be the most important moment for fixed income. As soon as the general flock in general starts doubting fixed income and the value of it at say boons at minus forty basis points or US tens at one seventy five um, then it's really game on and people will flock out of this asset class uh, and create quite a profit potential. Anyway, we're 12 minutes, almost 13 minutes into this. Seem to be talking a lot today. We got durable goods later today. Nothing really out of Europe. Uh, as far as global macro stuff and releases, uh, things, start get interest things start to get interesting with the RBA tonight. Uh, I will shut up now and wish you all luck. Remember, if you like our videos, please subscribe. Um, click the little thumbs up button, all that stuff. Uh, we appreciate it. Thanks, and I will uh, talk to you guys tomorrow. Ciao.